The Eagles soar to another playoff victory. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on the Holiday Football Show right here on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. As the Eagles dispatch of Leonard 42-6 to in a game that actually was kind of closer than the score says. The Holiday ended up kind of grinding Leonard down, but, I mean, Leonard had the big play early. Uh, Holiday had some adversity, but they were able to fight through. That's the most important thing. Now they're on to this next round, my favorite round, and that's Turkey Week football. The region semifinals this week, Holiday takes on undefeated Jacksboro. That game, of course, is Friday, 7 p.m., Graham's Newton Field. And, you know, it's interesting. Holiday's kind of the underdog. Now, not on our show, Sideline to Sideline, that Grant Goodwin and I do each in every week as we talk 3A football. You can find that at S2SGrantAndTerry.com, and we picked this game. We picked every game in the playoffs, of course. Um, we both feel that Holiday's going to win, but other pundits ha- have put Jacksboro, and I think there's some that's some deserved respect. Jacksboro in the year is 12-0. and 0. They have an explosive offense. They have a defense that's opportunistic, special teams that plays aggressive. And also, they're the new flavor of the the month. You know, this has been a the last two years now, three years. Well, until this past round, you know, it kind of went that Holiday played Bells and would beat them, and then Holiday would play Gunter and would lose to them. And that was kind of those three teams were the pecking order in this region. Then everybody else fell under it. Well, then last week, Jacksboro beating Holiday or Bells forty five to six. I'll tell you what, I was very impressed by them beating uh, a Panther team that I know was young this year on offense, but that, that slot T is still so hard to stop. Uh, and, and now, to be fair, Bell's had some key injuries uh, before the game and in the game, but still, you got to give the Tigers credit. Casey Hubble out there has built an offensive juggernaut. Lando Belcher at quarterback, Luke Sams at wide receiver, Cannon Valenzuela at wide receiver. You've got Kaleem Howard, who is maybe one of the better corners in the, in the region, if not the state in 3A Division II. Uh, and, and so give them credit for, for winning that game the way they did. And, and this is going to be a tough, tough matchup. And, and I think it's a fair – if you're picking Jacksboro in this game, I, I think that's a valid pick. This is a definitely pick them game. Now we're going to do what we always do, and that's talk to the head coach of Holiday. Coach Kyle Atwood. In fact, we'll do that when we come back right here on the Holiday Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. See Abla Espanol. Terry Bennett back here on the Holiday Football Show. Now joined by the head coach of the Eagles, Coach Kyle Atwood. And, Coach, first off, congratulations. You beat Leonard last week 42-6. to six. And What were your thoughts on the game? You know, I uh, talked to our kids at, at halftime and as well as after the game that um, we were we battled some adversity. Um, battled some adversity early. Kids, they, they overcame that. Um, and, you know, we were just very proud of, of their efforts and, uh, you know how we how we played and how we finished that that football game last Friday. Well, yeah, I mean it, it's a, a tale of two halves, especially what y'all did in that third quarter. Uh, again, we, we've said this all year long, and it's a broken record, but this defense once again just allows you to have time for your offense to get going with how they play through a whole game. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, we uh, we showed up and got off the bus and uh, starting slot receiver, big time special teams player for us, uh, <clears throat> had some back spasms mm-hmm. and back issues. And so we we knew about 10 minutes prior to, to game time that we were not going to have him. So that, that kind of affected what we were going to do offensively. Um, <clears throat> and we came out and 
some miscommunication d- defensively and gave up an early score uh, where, where we didn't do a good job of containing the quarterback. We didn't stay in coverage. And, you know, Leonard's quarterback, Cook, was a, a, if he, he's going to make you pay if you didn't uh, – you know, didn't do a, do a good job of covering or a good job of containing him, and he extended the play, uh, and, you know, and hit a receiver down down the middle of the field for a touchdown for an early score. And our our kids just get, regained focus, uh, and, and you know, came came to work the the next series defensively, and, and we did a heck of a job of keeping us in it until we were able to settle in and, and find what what we you know what we found throughout the course of the year is there are some teams and. Some weeks where we can throw the ball really well and getting our ten personnel even empty, and and that's been effective. And then there's sometimes where we've got to be in two back and twenty personnel, and then there's sometimes where we've got to be in the wing and just ground and pound. And uh, you know, it took us a couple drives to find exactly what what we could do uh, effectively uh, last Friday night. And um, you know, our defense did a good job of keeping us in it till we till we found that. Well, and, you know, not only the on-the-field results of being able to break, basically, as you say, into three different schematic uh, plays and concepts, you're causing teams that you're playing in the future a lot more extra prep time because they've got to figure out what they're going to do against all three of those looks against y'all. Absolutely. You know, I think it makes it very difficult on defense. And what we've kind of developed into is is the the ability to to do that without changing personnel on the field, without – you know, sending in a tight end, you know, we're able to move a wide receiver down to tight end, tight end spot. Uh, you know, we don't send a wing back in. Our a slot receiver goes a wing back. So we're able to bounce in and out of different formations and, and really uh, almost just schematic, you know, offenses as a whole uh, without changing personnel. So that makes it difficult to, as a defensive play caller, uh, you know, what are you going to do in these situations when you don't know exactly – uh, you know what person, what personnel you're going to get, or uh, you know, and so it makes it makes it pretty difficult on them, I think, and uh, it's been it's been pretty good for us so far. Now, is this something that you think going forward you might continue through the years, uh, or is this a specific year where because they had been in that other offense for so long, it's just kind of a muscle memory for them to be able to get back into it? Yeah, I think that you know we're going to always do whatever's best for our kids and fits our our uh, our kids and our personnel but you look at our lower levels uh we stayed in straight 10 at the uh at the eighth grade level that kind of suited us and fit us but uh you know we repped in practice some of our wing stuff and uh and a little bit of our 20 personnel the seventh grade stayed in 20 the whole time the eighth grade uh, the jv uh we came out and we went zero and three um lost by less than six points three weeks in a row the Iowa Park gym then in Idaho, or not Idaho, yeah, in Idaho. And so uh, then we jumped into wing, and we finished. We wrapped off seven straight wins in, in the wing. And so, uh, you know, I think we'll probably continue to to develop, you know, quarterbacks and develop our, you know, our offensive scheme as to, you know, what we've done in the past. But we're definitely going to continue to work. Um, that wing stuff just because they've done it for so long they execute it so well uh and like you said it makes it makes it difficult on the defense when you can do a little bit of both all right well you move on now you're taking on a jacksboro tiger team that's 12 and 0 uh casey hubble their head coach this is his like second full year he finally got a full off season in and you've seen what it can do i i, I told you before we start recording I think this is the most ex- diversified offense you've played this year because they can hurt you with their quarterback, Lando Belcher. They can hurt you with your ru- their running back, Luke Sams, who kind of plays like a Christian McCaffrey. Last week he had almost 80 yards receiving on top of 100 yards rushing. When you look at the film, what do the Tigers show you? Yeah, exactly kind of what you said. They're, they're explosive offensively uh, and not just to one single target. They've got a number of weapons. Uh, you know, at the receiver position. And then obviously, like you talked about, Sam's running back position does a great job running the ball, but he's also extremely effective in the pass game. Uh, and then they're, you know, very similar to us as far as trying to take what the defense gives you. And quarterback, a dual threat kid that, that can, you know, hurt you with his legs as well as extend plays and, and do a great job in the passing game. So, uh, you know, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a really good matchup for us. 
you know, I, I think our kids are excited to to play this style of offense and, and uh, uh, play a team, an offensive team that has put up f- over 50 points a game. You know, they they they're excited for that challenge, um, and so you know, I think it's going to be a a great game. I think it's going to be a good week, and uh, you know, we're just excited to get out there and, and play the game. And for me, watching their defense, they're not going to stand out stat-wise, but, man, they tend to make the big play when they need to. Go back to the Kalsberg game. They had a, a late goal line stand. They did the same thing against Millsap. So their defense doesn't stand out, but, boy, they sure do make the plays when they need to. Yeah, they do. You know, and, and a lot of those same kids, mm-hmm. you know, defensively, they're probably um, you know best defensive of player is Sam's at the linebacker position. He's He's a uh, he's a dang good linebacker. Um, reads defense as well, uh, and and he makes a, makes a lot of sure tackles. Um, then if you're trying to throw the ball, you know, uh, Howard out out at the corner position, uh, probably one of the better cover corners that that we've seen all year. Um, and Valenueva at, at the safety position. Belcher plays the safety position a little bit. Uh, they, I mean, so they've got some really good skilled kids in the, in, the, in the back end of things as well. Um, you know, I think, you know, our advantage may be a little bit up front. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've, you know, our offensive line has continuously progressed. And, and so I think that, uh, you know, we're going to have to win the line of scrimmage, but we feel good with that matchup, uh, you know, as far as our offensive line versus their defensive line. So, but yeah, like, you know, across the board, uh, defense, offense, uh, special teams, they do some really good things in the special teams. You look at that Kalisberg game, um, a block punt for mm-hmm. a touchdown, uh, block field goal, uh, big time returns, uh, you know, and then they 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 uh, held Calisburg on two, I believe, two two point conversions. Yep. So, a lot of points were were lots or flipped, you know, in in Jacksboro's favor in special teams. So they do a really good job in the special teams area as well. I know we live in cynical times, but I still think one of the most uh, enjoyable and most innocent weeks there are in, in, in the year is this week, Thanksgiving, high school football. Every high school program has this as a goal. What does it mean for you to be playing on this week? Oh, it's phenomenal. You know, we talked to the kids <clears throat> last week about uh, just the joys of getting to, getting to practice with your teammates and spend the Thanksgiving week. Uh, playing, in my opinion, the, gr- the greatest game that's ever been invented, the game of football uh, in Texas, you know. And so uh, it's it's been a really good and fun week, uh, you know, and I think our kids have embraced the, the opportunity to, to continue to be together and, and spend some time together, and, uh, you know. So it's probably, like you said, uh, the most sought-after week of of, of playing, you know, you talk to to your teams as you go into the playoffs. Like we want to be playing during Thanksgiving, and so we we're fortunate enough to do that. And, and I think our kids are preparing well this week to to hopefully give us a chance to play in December, which is a you know another goal of a lot of coaches and a lot of programs is play during Thanksgiving and play you know be playing in during, in December. Now, what do y'all do on Thanksgiving Day as a program? So we'll we'll come out tomorrow morning and and do what we call a keep the field, just kind of run through. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a little special thing at the at the end of it tomorrow, uh, just to celebrate our our kids and and you know we call our our team a family as well. So uh, we'll we'll keep it you know pretty similar to what we do every week, but we're gonna finish off with a little little something special. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie, and booze. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. As always, I want to thank Coach Atwood for joining us, especially on this week. It, this is my favorite week, Thanksgiving football week, but it's also the hardest week to do things like get press credentials and talk to coaches because everything's changed. Schedules are all wonky and everything, so I do appreciate him taking the time. This is going to be a blast. I, I, I love Thanksgiving football. Um, it, it's my favorite time of the year by far, uh, but just because everything, you've got college, all the impactful games that will happen this weekend. Like Grant Goodwin and I will be down in Houston uh, for two games on Friday, a game on Saturday, but we're going to make sure we find a place to have lunch so we can watch o- Ohio State and Michigan uh, because that game is just so fun to watch. That's kind of one of our traditions that we do now is we always try to catch that game 
on the Saturday morning as we're traveling. Um, and then you've got, you know, of course, the Cowboys. If you grew up in Texas, the Cowboys playing on Thanksgiving football. And now, you know, they have that third game, too. So you get three games. Uh, and then, of course, high school football. I mean, it's it's always in my life this time, you know, during football season, football from, you know, really from seven days a week. But actual watching of football, it's Thursday through Monday. But it just feels a little bit different on Thanksgiving, and it's just more enjoyable. And, and every coach now has that as their goal. And they, they've had for a while the Thanksgiving breakfasts, the lunches, however they do it. Um, I, I think, as, as I jokingly said, in this cynical world we live in now, it's one of the things that still – is as awesome as we think it is. It's not cliched, uh, and, and it's just a fun time. And then to end it with the, a game, and it should be a close game in the region semifinals. This is when it gets real. Not that the first two rounds aren't, but it's really when it gets real this round. The, 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 to me, every team, or at least the majority of teams that are in this round, I can see making it to uh, the state championship game or the state semifinals at least. Uh, and especially between these two, and yes, we know Gunner's laying in wait for the winner of this one. But still, you got to win this one before you get to them. And I think this is going to be one heck of a game and a fun one as well. Anyway, questions, thoughts, or comments? Terry at S2Sport.com. Uh, in case you forget how we do this, if Holiday wins, we're back next week on time. If Holiday loses, we'll have a wrap-up show, but we'll, we'll do it. we will do that at the end of the year. I usually like to do those in between uh, the state championship week and Christmas that week in between. I tend to like to give coaches time to kind of decompress and then look back at their season so we can have a good, fun discussion about it and, and you know, get an idea of where the program is going after this season into next season. But we'll worry about that, uh, you know, hopefully not next week. Uh, be safe if you're going to the game. Be safe if you're going to travel for Thanksgiving and enjoy the football. Remember, it's all fun. Hope, hope holiday wins, and let's meet back next week to talk about it right here on the Holiday Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media.